Hello, I'm Todd Zarwell. I'm a uh, full-time optometrist and a uh, developer of iDoc.com. And uh, between these two jobs, I um, find myself giving a lot of thought to electronic medical records, especially as how they um, work with uh, contact lenses. And I'd have to say that um, I'm uh, always a little dissatisfied with how they work. I just think there's potential for them to be so much better. So I thought since I have uh, um, the uh, unique ability or the unique perspective of being an optometrist and a uh, programmer that I'd make a little mock-up of uh, how I think um, electronic medical records should work as they relate to contacts. So uh, this is what I came up with. It largely uses a lot of the engines that I've built for iDoc, and I just put a uh, interface on it uh, that uh, works like a electronic medical records. So uh, first of all, uh, one thing that I find is that uh, since I work in plus cylinder, I uh, sometimes have difficulty working with contacts. I like working in plus cylinder, and when I um, have a new refraction, I like to compare it to my old refraction, so I like having it recorded in plus cylinder. But when, when, I, order to, when I go to order contacts, I tend to um, mentally convert my refraction into a uh, minus cell format and uh, I'm pretty good at doing that but sometimes I make mistakes uh, particularly when converting the axis I seem to uh, uh, be off by 90 degrees every once in a while which can be troublesome so one thing I like to have in my medical records is just a simple button that allows me to toggle between plus cell and minus cell so here I just press the button, plus cell, minus cell. Uh, pretty easy conversion, but uh, I think that'd be very helpful. Uh, secondly, uh, I'd like to be able to uh, vertex my refraction to uh, contact lens power. So um, uh, this is pretty easy to do. I've built calculators for IDOC to do this, but I really think that this should be done right in the EMR. So. In this case, I built a uh, little button that uh, just uh, says calc, and if you calculate, it'll take your um, a refraction, in my case, transpose it to minus cell, and then vertex it to the corneal plane. Let's just convert this to minus cell so we can see the difference. So uh, largely just vertex to the corneal plane, and uh, that just gives me a good start on figuring out what contacts I want to work with. We'll do that for the... Uh, for the left eye too here. Uh, next, I want to be able to easily um, specify what contact lenses I want. So I think an EMR should have just a really good up-to-date list of available contacts. So in this case, I um, have an autocomplete. So I'll just start typing, uh, let's say, Biofinity um, Toric, and uh, it'll easily let me select that. Not only that, when I select it, since Biofinity Toric only comes in uh, one base curve and one diameter, it automatically inserts that for me. And let's say this wasn't available, it also uh, automatically populates the fields with um, what uh, powers are available. So if I type minus uh, 7, it tells me that 7 and 750 are available. Or if I just leave that alone, Let's see here. It tells me that I can go up to a minus 10 in this particular lens. Um, this will also be a little flexible. I use the same engines that I use to build iDocs. So if you type in an abbreviation like AAA for Acubee Advance for astigmatism, you can select that lens instead, and it'll just update the base curve and di uh, diameter with that. And um, also, um, Acme Advanced for Astigmatism is a pretty complicated lens. It comes in a lot of variations. So now, since you've selected a lens, if you hit the Calc button, it will... Well, actually, before I do that, if you hit this question mark button, it will pop up a display showing you uh, the parameters that uh, uh, this particular lens comes in. And again, uh, this is something that uh, really is uh, the whole reason I built iDoc to have these sorts of uh, this sort of information available. Um, I think that it would be great if I could just access this within my EMR and not have to go outside to a site like iDoc. <clears throat> 
Um, now, when you hit the Calc button, it will not only transpose and vertex this prescription, the, uh, the refraction, but uh, when you hit it, it will look at the lens that you have selected and find the uh, closest available lenses. Uh, in this case, we're looking at high minus high cylinder lens at an oblique axis, and there really aren't a lot of great options in the Acme Advanced for Astigmatism lens, but it gives you uh, several options, and uh, it also gives you a sense of what VA you might get. You know, of course, this isn't uh, a guarantee. There's a lot of issues that might um, come into play here, but this is a proposed potential VA just based on um, uh, how much of the refractive error will be corrected, assuming that the lens um, rotates perfectly. So if you can go to here and just choose a lens, and it'll just blow in the one that you cho chose. Um, lastly, I think that, you know, as we saw, this particular lens is a pretty complicated lens. It comes in a lot of different variations. Um, I think that uh, the EM EMR should be able to tell you when you've inserted a combination of parameters that's incorrect. So, for example, if I say I want this cylinder power to be a minus 275, when I do that, this little red exclamation mark pops up telling you that uh, there's a problem with that. And when you see that there's a problem, you can click the question mark again, look at the parameters and say, oh, wait a minute, this particular lens doesn't come in a 275 um, uh, cylinder power. And it's just a way to alert you to the fact that a lens that you're inserting in there may not exist and you better, uh, better double check the parameters. So that's my little mock-up and I hope you like it. it. Obviously it's pretty crude and isn't very pretty, but I hope it gives you a sense of what I'm thinking. I'd love to hear what you have to say too, so if you get a chance, uh, shoot me an email or I don't have any commenting on my blog, but perhaps we can have a conversation on um, one of the social media groups, Opcom List, or one of the Facebook groups, or Google+. And um, I've made an API that has a lot of hooks into IDOC to do all these sorts of things. So the front-end interface was not very complicated. So I think it's something that any uh, web-based EMR could do uh, relatively easily. So if you get a chance to talk to your EMR vendor, uh, Ask them if, you know, if uh, someday they could uh, uh, try to implement some of these features. I think they'd make our lives all a lot easier when we're busy in practice and seeing patients. And it'd be nice not to have to um, flip out of our EMR and do searching and you know, external websites. So, all right. Well, thanks for uh, your attention. Goodbye.